My name is Volker Arnsmeyer. I'm section manager of the eVTOL and new concept section in EASA at the VTOL department. I'm going to present to you an EASA position regarding energy reserve. I want to share with you the following subjects, which is to share with you the objectives that we want to follow up, the special condition VTOL requirements and an EASA opinion that is currently already existing, to share with you a visibility of the VTOL flight phases and alternate landing sites, uh, to share with you the EASA approach in this context, and to come up to you with some of our conclusions. I want to share with you where in the SC VTOL we specify energy reserve. I also want to share with you what is the current context in the opinion of co commercial air transport regarding energy reserves. Uh, to also provide you an EASA position of how we want to continue with regard to the Park UAM. And uh, last not least, to identify some of the potential challenges that we're looking at. To identify where the special condition VTOL defines energy reserve, we have this subpart E requirement, which in very brief terms puts out the requirement to define an energy reserve. EASA published in early October 2020 this opinion 02-2020 on fuel energy planning and management. It primarily introduces improvements for efficiency of fuel energy planning and management for commercial air transport airplanes. It also incorporates into the EU rules the latest ICAO requirements and amendments for fuel planning and management as well as it clarifies and simplifies the rules for helicopter fuel energy planning and management including also refueling with rotors turning. This EASA opinion has six most important implementing rules that would also drive elements for the eVTOL. In particular, there's one rule for the authorities for the approval of fuel schemes, as well as five rules that would address particularly the needs for operators. For example, to describe the general rule with description of the fuel energy schemes, plus additional requirements for individual schemes. The fuel energy planning policy to address the quantity of fuel and energy. An aerodromes policy to define the selection of aerodromes as well as destination alternate, takeoff alternate, en route alternate and the like things. The in-flight energy management as well as, uh, for example, declaration of fuel energy mayday situations and special refueling or defueling for, of the aircraft to be considered perhaps also for eVTOL. And last not least, the provision of additional AMC and guidance material to drive particular needs for that domain. For the phases of flight, we would still maintain the original approach given by the commercial air transport colleagues. And this would comprise the taxi energy consideration, the trip energy, the energy for contingency domains, as well as the destination and alternate fuel and energy. Then we have to address the final reserve and energy, as well as the additional fuel energy that might be required for the type of operation plus some particular considerations depending on the operation itself, and last not least, any requirement given by the commander. So this slide should show you in a more visual way the different elements that I described before. We would have the departure vertiport with the related taxi fuel. We would then have to plan for the trip fuel, including the takeoff, the actual ferry, and the landing. If the landing at the destination site would not be possible, you would have to plan for a respective alternate landing with the respective needs for energy. On top, you will have to also consider the need for a go-around maneuver and uh, respective contingencies when it's about emergency situations. In particular case for VTOL, we are also proposing to add a particular consideration when an alternate landing site would be more or less en route the flight. You would still have to plan for the original trip and respective energy needs. However, should the destination not be reachable for whatever reason, 
or you cannot fly there to, then you would have to define a point of no return. From where on you would fly to the alternate landing site. And that should provide you sufficient energy during the flight. So what is now the EASA approach? We are proposing to remove the more restrictive requirements in terms of flight times and altitudes from the commercial air transport current requirements, as well as to prepare elements for the alternate use when you have a point of no return to be identified. So in more detail, the approach regarding the part UM would be to address in it still the essential definitions that we need to have to talk the same language. We would have to include the planning requirements for fuel and energy reserves. We would have to implement elements on the monitoring of the consumption and the need to consider safety margins, inaccuracies, human factors, operational needs, as well as extra fuel energy requirements. We would have to address the in-flight fuel and energy management as well as emergency situations for the aircraft and or fuel energy situations. The data collection is an element we wish to implement here as well. And last not least, to develop AMC and guidance material to take account for the new technologies, which might drive different needs depending on the actual technology. So now we have two parts to address. On one hand, the special condition VTOL, as well as the part UAM. For the special condition VTOL, we wish to develop together with the industry the concepts for adequate fuel energy indications. We need to account for the battery technology at this time with the conditions and status information, with environmental conditions, as well as aircraft status or configuration. Furthermore, also the guidance on specifying the reserve energy with related triggers for a warning have to be implemented. All that work is already ongoing with the work group 112 of EuroKE, where in the subgroups 1 and subgroup 6 relevant activities are ongoing. For the part UAM, we do have an int intention to drive the fuel energy policy with more performance-based terminology. To base on this RMT0230 related AMC and guidance material to cater for more details. The respective proposal for that wording has been made to the work group just a couple of weeks ago. So what are our conclusions right now? Well, we wish to continue with the current ongoing rulemaking activities and reuse most of the parts by still implementing some further uh, performance-based terminology. We wish to keep the historical approach in a principle but adopted even further for the current technology needs. We are bound to have a strong cooperation with industry in order to make best use of the resources as well as to implement the best solutions for the rules. We will have a technical challenge in defining the sufficient energy reserve in order to trigger the warning but not each time during a routine operation. And last not least, the display of the energy consumption, the available energy and the like is a big technical challenge and the cooperation, as said before, with the industry is a strong need. Thank you for your attention and I invite you to put forward your questions.